Warning. Although my content is usually family-friendly, Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney is a game that has been rated T by the ESRB rating system, and as such, will contain blood, language, suggestive themes, and violence. Viewer discretion is advised. Are we ready for more testimonies by the lunch lady? Because apparently uh -huh. she's still not kicked out of court for all of her testimonies. Yeah. Oh boy. Artie Marty back for more Ace Attorney. And so I'm cold. So we're on Angel Star's, what, like, fourth testimony? Something like that. Apprehending the suspect. After the murder, the suspect attempted to run behind a par partition off to the side. I quickly caught her, explained her rights to her, and arrested her on the spot. Ah, yes, when I arrested her, she mentioned the muffler. That's what had me confused in my earlier testimony. The chief prosecutor made to escape, but against Angel Star, resistance is futile. Yep, so she's like, oh yeah, she got stabbed twice, right? Because she's like, thought she saw blood. Was, no, that was actually her scarf, but she wasn't wearing a scarf that day. So, yeah. You're quite determined about this scarf, aren't you? I strike like a snake and bite like a cobra. That's me, Angel Star. That wasn't a very good metaphor. First of all, a cobra is a kind of snake. Don't bother me with details unless you want to get bitten. No, no thanks. Note to self, Attorney Wright gets bitten by Snake. The Chief Prosecutor tried to resist, but her efforts were in vain. She knocked my hands aside, kicking over an oil drum. A uh, oil drum? Hard to imagine. Oh, she's beautiful but deadly. A predator, this one. A leopard woman. Roar. Very well, Mr. Wright. Your cross-examination, if you will. Oh, yeah. More testimonies. This'll be fun. <laughs> so, where is this partition on the floor plans? I'm sure she means the wall next to the car. That's right. There was a wall there, about six feet high. She was obviously trying to hide herself. Quite a natural thing for a criminal to do. And what did you do then? I quickly caught her, explaining her rights to her, and arrested her on the spot. Did she arrest her? You say quickly. Were you close to the suspect? As I just said, I was only 30 feet away from her the whole time. But you had to jump the fence. Hmm. Maybe I should press her for more details? Leave her alone or press her. Well, you want to press her, so... Okay. I mean, I haven't seen what happens to this. How far away she was she when she witnessed the murder? I guess I could just look at the picture to find out. Very well, you may continue with your testimony. No, you may not! We're going back in time to press her again. I'd like to see this on the floor plans, just to be safe. The Lunchland car was... She was a visitor, thus she was parked in the B block. So you witnessed the murder from here? That would make it about 30 feet from the car, yes. Is that correct, Miss Star? Y yes that's right. But there was a chain-link fence in front of you. I went over it, of course. Amazing! The cough-up queen, lunch lady athlete indeed. I would have taken a bit of time to climb over the fence. So she couldn't have gotten to my sister that fast. Yeah, that fence was about nine feet high, too. How come this guy didn't get away? That's interesting. And yes, she did arrest her. I guess because she's an ex-cop, she can kind of do that. Okay. Also, not sure if you noticed, like, she's got, like, this face here, and then when she flips her hair, she's got, like, the, like, Evil scowling face. face. She's the good cop and the bad cop all in one. Mm -hmm. Which is kind of interesting. She mentioned the muffler. What exactly did she say? If I remember it exactly, I would tell have told you in my testimony. Cheeky! Anyway, all I heard her say was the word muffler. Just that one word? So, what you heard wasn't the suspect talking to you, but to someone else? Yes, the chief prosecutor was talking on her phone. Her phone? You mean this cell phone? Ask fervor or leave it be? Because uh... if we ask fervor, we might have to point out she called Emma. Yeah. Uh, let's just try just in case. Miss Sky's cell phone. The last number she called was her sister Emma. Hmm. 
If I press this too hard, who knows who the snake will bite? The witness may continue with her testimony. No, she won't! By phone, do you mean this cell phone discovered at the crime scene? Yes, ultimately. Ultimately? My memory. It's like a salmon heading upstream, you see. N no, the court doesn't see Miss Star. The chief prosecutor first attempted to use the phone hanging on the wall. On the wall? That's right! Near the car. There was an emergency phone on the wall. Apparently it was out of order. And so she used her cell phone. Indeed, the emergency phone was out of order that day. What the heck? That's like the worst thing ever. <laughs> I know. They're clearly not up to code. Hmm, good witnessing, witness. Good witnessing? Whatever happened to good testifying? <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Wright. You, of course, should add this to your testimony. The things I do to please this rookie defense attorney. Cell phone updated in the court record. She gave up trying to use the cell phone on the wall. Or, she gave up using the phone on the wall and tried to use her cell phone. Um, do you think you could restate your testimony for the court? Aha! I was going to ask the same thing. I'll only say this one time, so listen close, look, rookies. The chief prosecutor stabbed the victim and ran behind the partition. Then she picked up the emergency phone on the wall, but it was out of order. So she pulled out her own cell phone out. She pulled out her cell phone out of her pocket. Whoa! Just phased through the fence. And during that—that's <laughs> the judge. Oh. And during that time, you climbed over the chain link fence. Whoa! That's pretty cool. Then, when I boldly grabbed her arm. The chief prosecutor hung up her phone. And you saw her doing this? What is it, Mr. Wright? Chief prosecutor made to escape, but against Angel Star resistance is futile. Really? She made to escape? Can you be more specific? She brushed aside my hand and ran. It was a terrible sight to see. Like a dollop of lard on a... On a Pate of foie gras. Pate of foie gras. Okay. I was like, I thought it was plate, but nope. Huh? She even kicked over an oil drum at me. Uh, an oil drum? There was an oil drum lying on its side at the scene of the crime. But it's strange. Hmm, what's that? If she wanted to escape, why didn't she run the other way? The other... Ah! The car entrance! Th that's right! It doesn't make any sense that she would run from behind the partition to the oil drums. Excellent! More mysteries! I wish we could solve a few before finding more, though. So Miss Skye tried to run? I'm sorry my sister is so suspicious, Mr. Wright. Not as sorry as I am. But she didn't do it! You have to believe me! Alright, do you know where the contradiction is? Um... I still think it's ridiculous that she climbed over the wall, but I don't think she hung up the cell phone, did she? No, she had not hung up the, her cell phone. Okay, because Emma... Because Emma, she called Emma, and then Emma's like, she hung up almost immediately. There wouldn't and, have been enough time to climb over the wall. Well, no, because basically she, Angel Star saw her commit the murder. Lana was starting to run to use the phone on the wall, and that's when she started climbing the wall, then Lana realized, oh shoot, this phone on the wall is not working, and then pulled out her cell phone. By that time, Angel Star basically climbed over the wall. Okay. So th that's still alright. Yeah. Hmm. Made to escape. What, is it that? Just because of the four plans? And why the heck would you run over there? No, that's not it. Also, you arrested- if she arrested her immediately... Um... She didn't say immediately, she quickly caught her. Well, arrested her on the spot, though. Th that would be like, I arrest you, and then, like, she starts running away. That'd be weird. Yeah, I guess. Um, can I see the evidence? Sure. Stop cracking your neck, that's really weird. Well, it, it hurts otherwise. I think it's hurting because of the cracking. No, it feels better. Uh, do we have all crime photos? 
I wish that this I could have the crime looked, photo we have. I wish we could have looked at the other one that came up quickly when she was like holding it and then the phone fell. That's not a photo though. That's just like a flashback. A flashback. Thing. Okay. How did she? Okay, so she's there. Why would she run? Toward the I, I don't know. This is weird. Is it the muffler? No. I can tell you what statements it's on if you if that would help. Sure. It's this one. You just used your cell phone. Uh okay, let me look at evidence then. That was several minutes after. Wasn't it? Not Edgeworth parked his car there at 512. Oh, never mind. Um floor plans? There's the telephone. She used her phone after that. Why wouldn't she have just used the cell phone immediately? I don't know. Maybe she didn't want people to search her phone and be like, oh you called someone. If she'd used that phone on the wall, no one would have been able to figure out okay. who the call went to. Okay. Um, okay, go back. I'm trying to see what else there is. I have no idea. You don't? No. Is it the plans? There's something strange about these plans. Re with regards to her statement. Give it trying to use the phone on the wall. And it might not be the kind of thing you're looking for. Why didn't she go to the security room? Angel Star or Lana? Lana. It's on the second floor. And why would she go to the security room if she had just committed murder? Oh, okay. Well, I'm assuming she didn't commit it, but who knows. You can't see it still? What's this? This? Mm -hmm. That's like... I believe that's just like, like a six don't park here spot. Is all? <laughs> There's like six prosecutors. Okay. Von Karma, Edgeworth, Payne, and That's then... an exit out. Yep. Um... That is a tiny parking lot. That also, is... how did Edgeworth get his car in there? He had to be like... Maybe the partition... Oh no, the partition must have been up, because it was a... That the is a good question, Marty. I've, like... I've never even thought about that. You have to like drive over the parking spot to be like, <laughs> oh, let me just park my car. <laughs> it just got one of those newfangled cars where it pulls up, then the wheels turn okay. like horizontal. Can you turn to the other side of the map? There's not much here. Oh. My car was over there. I don't see it, and it's making me mad. All right. I have to conclude that you have a personal grudge against Miss Lana Sky. The witness is a former detective. Her testimony is unmarred by personal bias. Well, who would have thought that you would be my knight in shining armor, prosecutor? You, who, together with the chief prosecutor, kicked me out two years ago. Well, Miss Starr, this is a fatal contradiction with your testimony. How do you explain this? Hmm. I don't know what you're talking about. Mess with me, and I'll make you cough it all up! <clears throat> Let's look at the floor plans. You said you witnessed the crime from this point. However, if that's true, you couldn't Wouldn't possibly have seen Miss Sky making that phone call. I believe you see what I'm getting at. That emergency phone was on the back side of this partition. If indeed you were in the B block, you couldn't have seen it! What? Wog! We've got you cornered now. Order! Order! What is the meaning of this? It's simple, Your Honor. She's not coughing up lunch, she's coughing up lies! Ugh. That's quite a claim, Mr. Wright. Perhaps you will allow me a question? Tell us exactly what lie this witness has told the court. Here's where the counterattack begins. I can't afford to get this wrong. The witness lied about what she saw, where she saw it, or the order of events. Where she saw it. I think. That is correct. Okay. But <laughs> we have to choose the wrong ones, of course. She lied about what she saw. In other words, she didn't see Miss Sky using that emergency phone. It does seem hard to imagine how she could have. Very logical. 
What's the matter, Star? Cat got your lunchbox? Um, Mr. Wright, I hate to bother you while you're celebrating your victory. But why would Miss Star lie like that? Huh? Why would she say that my sister tried to use the phone but failed? It doesn't make any sense. Why lie about something so insignificant? Oh, dang, she's right. I mean, maybe she really did see her trying to use this emergency phone. I see no room for doubt here. <laughs> you ordered the patooey on rice, right? <laughs> oh my gosh, that is amazing. Mr. Wright, and I thought you had something there. Ugh, one. One more try. Hm, I see it in your eyes. You haven't learned your lesson, have you? Tell us exactly what lie the witness told the court. She lied about the order of events. Miss Sky used that emergency phone before the murder. That would make no sense. I see. I hadn't thought of that. That took the wind out of her sails. Um, Mr. Wright, I hate to bother you while you're celebrating your victory, but why would anyone use the emergency phone before the murder? Huh? Just when you think he can't sink any lower, he amazes us. I applaud you, Mr. Wright. You ordered the orange peel lunchbox, right? I guess that teaches me not to get excited before the evidence. <laughs> Ugh. <laughs> Alright, yep, you were right from the get-go. She tried to use the emergency phone, but it was out of order. What is significant about this fact? Nothing. It would be pointless for her to lie about it. Pointless to lie? I see. The witness did actually see Miss Sky using the emergency phone. In other words, Miss Star witnessed the crime from a different location. That makes sense. What lady would jump? A different location? Now that's a pointless lie if I ever heard one. Before you call my lie pointless, at least let me tell it. Let me ask a question to our clever wordsmith, Mr. Wright. Just where was the witness when she saw the crime? All the testimony we've heard until now points in one direction. The place where Miss Star witnessed the crime was here. Where do you think it was? Mm, well, if, in order for them to see this, it would have had to have been around here, I'm guessing? You think it's down here? I think it has to be around in the A block. In the A block? Alright. If she was here, she could see the emergency phone. Th that's true. That solves the mystery. That would allow her to see the emergency phone, yes. But if she was there, she would have been able to arrest her well before she dialed her cell phone. Oh. You doubt my speed. I can run 150 feet in 9 seconds, you know. Is that really that fast? Not as fast as your witty rejoinders. Ah, uh, yes, your honor. Alright. So that wasn't it. Interesting dialogue, though, for... Yeah. If we choose the exact same spot she said <laughs> she was in the first place, I wonder what happens. I think... I mean, it's highly likely that's where she was. You think? It's highly likely. Your cavalier attitude stands in stark contrast to your feeble argument, Mr. Wright. Her being there wouldn't change a thing. Please, Mr. Wright, think before you speak. Ah, uh, yes, Your Honor. Alright. So you kind of had the right idea. It has to be around here somewhere. Somewhere where she could actually see the telephone. But it has to be in a place where she wouldn't be able to run to the crime scene that quickly. Mm. She was in the car! That was ridiculous. <laughs> she saw it for the rear view mirror. Maybe it was from the security room? You think that's where it is? Maybe, yeah. Uh... Wanna try it? Sure. This is the only place where she could have been. The security guard room? Indeed, the security guard room in the underground parking lot is well positioned. It's built on the second level, so you can see the entire lot. Hmm, she would have been able to see the emergency phone from there. But why there? There are so many other places she could have seen the phone. Not in this case, Your Honor. The witness, not being part of the prosecutor's office, couldn't park in the A block. The only place where she could have seen the crime and the back of the partition is here. I remember in your testimony you said you brought a lunch to your boyfriend in the security guard room, yes? That was my thought, too. Well, Miss Star? How many 
many years have I been getting the better of men? To think the tables could be turned. Today a man has got the better of Angel Star. Order! Order! Witness! What have you done? You used to be a detective! You should know better! I'm not turning back. The guilty will be punished. And I'll do what I must to make sure justice prevails. The guilty? Is she talking about Miss Skye? Um, Mr. Wright, doesn't this strike you as odd? Why did Miss Star lie? It doesn't make sense. Huh? She could have just said that she saw the crime from the security guard station. It wouldn't change anything. Exactly. This photograph tells all. It was the defendant who stabbed the victim. That truth still stands. But how would she have gotten that photo? It still stands? I disagree, Mr. Edgeworth. W what? If a witness is found to be lying, they're guilty of perjury. She knows this. She wouldn't risk that without a good reason. Perjury doesn't exist in this world, though. So, tell us what her reason was, Mr. Wright. Huh? M me Who else?! Mr. Wright, let's review what we know. Miss Starr witnessed the crime from the security guard station. But she lied and said she saw it from the B-Block. It must make a vital difference, but what? What could change? Angle of view to the crime, distance to the crime, or difference in lighting? Distant difference in lighting, I don't think, would make any difference. Um, so we can rule that we out. We can rule that out. Distance to the crime would change a bit. Because um, even though it's still close-ish by in B-Block, you have to scale an entire wall, which I feel like she would not be doing in the that outfit especially. Um, <laughs> angle view to the crime would be, I think, important. Because the photo is behind the, the wires. Okay. Think. Well, let's just do this first, because yeah. we know this isn't it. It's a difference in lighting! Lighting? What does that mean? Well, it means, uh, see, the security guard station is on the second level. So, uh, she would have seen the crime in better lighting conditions. <coughs> and this is important. Why? Um... Perhaps you'd like to reconsider, Mr. Wright. Mr. Wright, let's review what we know. Alright, yeah. <laughs> Alright, so it's one of these two, then. Mm-hmm. Which one are you leaning towards would be the um, right one? Distance could be a big one, because it's just going down the stairs, which would be way easier for her to get to it. But then the angle view of the crime... Whoever... However she got that photo, she had to have been in B-Block to get it. Okay. I think... Why, the angle at which she saw the crime would change. The angle? What do you mean? Uh, um, well, the security guard station is on the second floor, and, um, she would have sort of had a more 3D view of the said. crime. And this is important to why? Uh, <laughs> perhaps you'd like to reconsider? <laughs> okay. Yeah, it's distance of the crime. Okay. It changes the distance between her and the scene of the crime. My condolences, Mr. Wright, but one look at the floor plans and it's quite clear. The distance between the scene of the crime and the guard station is 30 feet. I don't see how that would change what she saw. What she saw is not in the question here. What matters is the time it would take her to reach the scene of the crime. Miss Starr, you witnessed the crime from the security guard station. Now, how long did it take you to go from there to the scene of the crime where you arrested Miss Sky? Well, witness? You. Yes? You ordered the squid wheels, right? The quality of my lunch juice has gone from low to inedible. <laughs> I was bringing a PB&J sandwich with fresh boysenberry jam to my boyfriend. Mmm, boysenberry for the boyfriend. He wasn't in the station, so I waited. I witnessed the crime from the glass-walled station. And before I knew what I was doing, I found myself running toward the scene. But, 
The door was locked. I couldn't open it. Does that link up? That is insane. That would have been way too long. That's why I had to go through the visitor's parking in B-Block. That's uh, quite a detour. That is absolutely not it. It probably took me at least five minutes to get to the scene of the crime. F f f five minutes? Hmm, this changes things considerably. But it was that woman over there in the defendant's chair who stabbed him. I know it. Photographic evidence. I swear it. I swear it on my finest plastic spork. You have a point. And the spork is a wonderful invention. No, no it's it not. Sucks. The spork is the worst. It can't do what a fork can do, and it can't do what a spoon can do. It's literally the worst of the both worlds. The only thing that works is stew. Because it, like, doesn't take the liquid, it just picks it. But well, no, because it can still fall for the gaps in the prawns. <sighs> Would you like another caviar lunch? Absolutely! Uh-oh. Mr. Wright, you have to do something! Do I have any evidence to stop this? Raise an objection? Sit back and observe! Wait, like, the lunch? <laughs> um, no. About the five minutes oh, to the crime. Oh, yes. <laughs> I was like... I can't stop her from giving a lunch to a dude. I think I need more evidence before I go sticking my spork in this mess. Ooh, caviar! Oh, how it makes my eyes tingle! Mr. Wright! No evidence can win against the raw power of caviar. It's a scientific fact. The only thing that's left is your strong perseverance and deft powers of deduction. Let's screw the lid back on those overpriced fish eggs. <laughs> oh, it still works. Five minutes between the witnessing of the murder and the arrest? Think about it! You could make pasta in that amount of time! If you like it al dente. <laughs> I've got lunchboxes that tie pasta in knots, rookie. A five minute blank? Isn't that strange? Strange? If you were a criminal, what would you do with five minutes, Your Honor? Well, um, I guess I'd flee the scene. Hey! D d don't get the wrong idea! I didn't kill anyone! But you have the instincts of a killer. You would run! But this time was different. Miss Sky dawdled at the scene of the crime. She even had her picture taken. No true criminal would act this way. It's inconceivable. Y yeah! <laughs> well then, it seems we've come to the end of this testimony. She has a grudge against the defendant, and there is an issue, a blank in, there is a blank in her testimony. Mr. Edgeworth, is the next witness ready to go? Unfortunately, I appear to have overestimated this witness on account of her professional history. We did it! We screwed that can shut, Mr. Wright. Th that was too close. I'm afraid that the cough-up queen has been dethroned. And with that, court is adjourned. Really? They're not even remotely considering me. Mr. Edgeworth, you ordered the squid wheels, right? That's the one she tried to foist off on me! I prefer not to take the defense team's leftovers. Anything else to say? I might be able to save you. I have decisive evidence. Wh what was that? Is this another one of her trick lunchboxes? My apologies, but we have no further questions to ask of you, Miss Star. Ah. Oh. Is this your jumbo lunchbox? Woohoo! A triple decker! Out of deference to the witness's determination, wow. I'll allow one more time. Wow. Yeah, that's right. Judge, I mean. you suck. <laughs> Let's hear about this decisive evidence. Like the Lunchland motto says, you won't be disappointed. What's she going to pull out of her lunchbox this time? Also, the judge is going to be fat in like two days. <laughs> I, I mean, so caviar much. is pretty delicate, I think. Decisive evidence. I should have mentioned those five minutes when I wasn't looking at the crime scene. And now, to the matter of the victim's shoe. Did I not bring this up? Two types of blood were found on the shoe, and man, the slowdown is just atrocious. Hey. Well, let, me, let me fix that. Never mind. One was, of course, the victim's. And the other one was the defendant, Miss Lana Skye's blood. 
The shoe proves it. It's flawless, decisive evidence. What did that prove at all? That Lana was there when the guy was bleeding out. <laughs> what? There was blood on the shoe? Try Lunchland for all your lunch and decisive evidence needs. Witness, what's the meaning of this? Why is this the first time I've heard of this evidence? Simple. As I've already said, I don't trust you with evidence, Mr. Edgeworth. That's why I took the liberty of investigating this myself. And you had blood tests performed? Didn't I mention? I have three boyfriends in forensics. Forensics? Wow, Angel Star, this is not good. Like Angel, you're just... Man. One boyfriend, that's all you're allowed. Oh at, at one time. Yeah. In any case, Your Honor, I can't accept this as evidence. What? You should know the two rules of evidence law, Miss Star. Rule one, no evidence shall be shown without the approval of the police department. In other words, this shoe is illegal evidence, at least for the time being. Is that right, Mr. Wood? Or Mr. Wright? It seems so. Edgeworth sure is celebrating. Not so fast, Mr. Edgeworth. Don't forget, I used to be a, de a detective. As I mentioned previously, this shoe has already been tested by the me a member of the forensics department. As you can see, it was approved by the police department as of today. Even the general public can produce official evidence, Mr. Edgeworth. Mm -hmm. Is that right, Mr. Wright? It seems so. Edgeworth is looking pretty sullen. You can at least study some evidence law, really. Yeah, really, Phoenix. The prosecution's complaints notwithstanding, it appears that this evidence satisfies the first rule of evidence law. Well, it seems you have yet another court count against you, witness. Anything to ensure that the guilty are properly judged. Victim shoe added to the court record. Very well, Mr. Wright, you may cross-examine the witness. Again? <laughs> I told you, this trial period is really long. Uh... Decisive evidence. Dun, okay, dun, hang dun, on. Dun. Here we All go. Right. Here we go. Why did you lie about those five minutes? I guess you could say I just wanted people to look at the results. The results? How many times do I have to say this? I saw the chief prosecutor stab the victim before my very own eyes. Compared to that, five minute blank means nothing. Then why didn't you just tell the truth? Make me laugh? We're dealing with the most untrustworthy of the vile lot known as prosecutors. Falsified evidence, arranged testimonies, erasing and manipulating evidence. When you fight monsters, you need to use every trick in the book. This when the suspect is admitting she did it? False testimony is the most despicable crime of all, Miss Star. Let's just get this over with, and even though nobody gets punished for it, And you found this shoe at the scene of the crime? I detained the chief prosecutor and notified the police department. I wanted to make myself useful when I was waiting for the police to arrive. So, like an ill-trained pooch, you snuck off with a shoe? I was afraid someone would erase the chief prosecutor's crime. This shoe was my very secret weapon if that should happen. See this fashionable basket I have here? It carries more than lunchboxes, gentlemen. I'm happy for you and your lunchbox bag, really. In any case, you removed valuable evidence from the scene of the crime. Now tell us what you did next. Two types of blood were found on the shoe. HOLD IT! So you brought it to the forensics department? If you're going to submit something as evidence in court, you need it approved. To do that, evidence must be analyzed by a forensics expert. And she got away with her little coop because she used to be a detective. That is not how you pronounce coup. <laughs> I, yeah. The shoe does appear to have bloodstains on it. Makes sense. After all, a man was stabbed here. And that blood belonged to the victim, Detective Goodman? As I said, there were two types of blood found on the shoe. And the other was the defendant, Miss Long Sky's blood. Oh, that's from her cut, though. Yeah. 
You can't say for sure the blood belonged to the victim with a blood test. You claim to know something about blood tests, rookie? Huh? Well, speak up. Uh, well... Blood comes in four types, A, B, O, and A, B. However, you can't tell from a blood test whether a murder was performed in cold blood! That's just a figure of speech, Mr. Wright. Actually, if you combine all various blood tests, there are millions of types. It's practically impossible to narrow a blood sample down to one person. Or so I hear. M millions of types? If I had a little more time, I would have gotten DNA test results. But they said there's very little doubt it could be anyone's but Miss Lana Skies. Hmm, so the suspect's blood was found on the victim's shoe. That ties her directly to the death of Detective Goodman. I was afraid he was going to say that. The shoe proves it. It's flawless, decisive evidence. I can't let this evidence go through without a fight. You ordered the peppered fish guts, right? Ew. Some like it hot, Mr. Wright. Some like your client. She's in enough hot water to make a whole batch of soup. Mr. Wright! Do you or don't you have a problem with this shoe? A problem? This is critical. What's wrong with the victim's shoe? There's no problem, there's a problem. Also, we can examine the shoe. Which we probably should do. This blood. It's my sister's, right? It appears so. Lana's right hand was bandaged when I saw her in jail. She must have cut herself at the time of the crime. Poor sis. Whoa. Oh, oh, hi there. That's a whole lot of blood. Oh, there's blood here too! On the sole of the shoe? It's got to be the victim's. He must have stepped in a puddle of his own blood. All this blood. It's horrible. Hmm. This blood might be an important clue. Uh. Yeah. There is a problem. <laughs> yeah. No, there's nothing there. And if I just stab blindly at it, it'll hurt my case. Come on, Mr. Wright, I know you can find something. Some kind of off-the-cuff contradiction. I'm trying to avoid saying things off-the-cuff lately. That's pretty sly, hiding evidence like that. There's nothing sly about a lawyer using the law as a weapon. In any case, science is always on our side. Don't forget, scientific investigation is a wave of the future. Hmm, maybe I should investigate this evidence a little more closely. We did that. If I'm not imagining things, I'd say there is one critical problem with this evidence. A clear contradiction. That gleam in your eyes. You're still young, rookie. I'd give you a peppered fish gut now. But you couldn't take the heat, could you? Let's hear what Mr. Wright has to say. What is contradictory about the victim's shoe? Show us the problem with this evidence. Great, it slowed down again. I wonder if you noticed. There's blood on the bottom of this shoe. Don't mess with me, rookie. Or it'll be your blood on the bottom of my shoe. Hmm, indeed, there is quite a bit of blood on the bottom of the shoe. It makes sense. The victim was stabbed with a knife. What could possibly be contradictory about blood on the bottom of his shoe? It was one knife wound, it wouldn't have been that much blood. Um, yeah it would! Okay, if you I... stab him in the heart, then there's gonna be a there's ridiculous a amount, of, amount blood. of blood. Okay. Even if you- Even if you're just stabbed deep enough, there's gonna be a lot of blood when you take that knife out. Um... Why? I'm guessing your shoe has blood on it too. You just shot yourself in the foot! <laughs> ah! Would you like a grinder or grind from the heat of my boot, 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 Mr. Wright? I can't say From the anything. heel of my boot. I can't speak Man, down Man, tough crowd. Mr. Wright, let's be scientific about this. Examine the evidence. As I thought, a waste of time. Well, that was a nice break. Let's return to the testimony, shall we? Mm. Alright. So no, it's not the amount of blood. Okay... Do, 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 
Contradictory. This is really easy. Okay, guys. What's contradictory about the blood on the bottom of his shoe, not her shoe? Yeah, this is Goodman's shoe, not Mana's shoe. I mean, she would have hurt herself. Yes, she cut herself with the knife when she stabbed him. Wouldn't there have been more? Okay, so this is what I'm trying to imagine. She shoved him in a trunk, or someone shoved him in a trunk. He, there's an entire pool of blood in Edgeworth's trunk. He yeah. might need to get that fixed, by the way. He might yeah. need to get oh, that yeah. clean. He's gonna need a whole new car, I'm guessing. Um, but it would be on more of his shoe. Not necessarily. If, if you were in a pool of your own blood, and you are just like, Blah. I would normally agree with you, but... I don't know. He could have just stepped in a tiny bit of the pool. That's true. That means he would have lived? He lived for at least a little bit. Oh. May I never die that way. Okay. Please let death be instantaneous. Okay. It's the uh, prosecutor drove! No. <laughs> what about the autopsy? Okay, do, do what is what? causing this much game lag? What? This is know. not a complicated game. Uh, can we check? No. I'm not finding it, and I'm really mad, because I feel like I was doing okay up until now. So you give up? Yeah. Give up! Give up! The problem lies in the footprint. The footprint? Note that the bottom of the victim's shoe is covered in blood. Then, isn't it strange? Why weren't there any bloody footprints oh. found by the scene of the crime? Aha! Uh -huh. As you can see, there were no traces of any such footprints at the scene of the crime. That contradicts your claim about this shoe. This picture only shows part of the floor, so there could have been bloody footprints. If there were bloody footprints, there they would have been found. We checked the scene and found nothing of the sort. Order, order, order. Well, witness. What? Huh? I uh. Great going, Mr. Wright. But it's true that the, the lack of a footprint's a contradiction. But then we have to ask why there wasn't a footprint. Oh, that's true. There has to be a reason why there wasn't a footprint. Think, Mr. Wright. Think. Hey, I don't know why it's not there. I'm just good at finding contradictions. What? I see. Now I get it. Get what? Our witness is more devious than I gave her credit for. We were hoodwinked to the very end. But she slipped. There is one vital hint to the truth in her testimony. What are you talking about? Think back to when she told us about apprehending the suspect. The chief prosecutor tried to resist, but her efforts were in vain. She knocked my hands aside, kicked over an oil drum. Oh, she's beautiful but deadly. A predator, this one. A leopard woman. Roar. I thought that was a strange thing for the normally cool-headed chief to do. No kidding. Now, witness, allow me to ask a very simple question. This oil drum, was it empty? Oh, that, hmm? I'm not sure I like your attitude, Mr. Edgeworth. Though apparently you're not the slowest conveyor belt in the, the lunchbox factory. Witness? W well, was the oil drum empty? The oil drum kicked over by the chief prosecutor was brimming with water. W water? What does that mean? The blood would have Still don't get away. it, Mr. Wright? Do you want to know the reason she knocked it over? The real reason? Aha! You don't mean. Yes, the suspect knocked over that oil drum for one reason and one reason alone. To erase the bloodstains that would become evidence against her. <laughs> that ties things up quite nicely. The bloodstains left on the victim's shoes tie her quite clearly to this murder. Then, after the deed was done, she knocked over the oil drum to erase the telltale signs. Why, that's a prosecutor's speciality, erasing evidence. That reminds me, Miss Sky's right hand was hurt. Didn't she say she'd cut herself when she stabbed him? So my 
sister's blood on the shoe. That's when it happened? Well, I see no reason to prolong this trial. Mr. Wright, do something, please! What? What can I do? Your sister has confessed to the crime, and she tried to conceal it. But, but... Enough. There is no need to further debate. The verdict, Your Honor? Very well. But Angel Star is on the prosecution side. She couldn't have been lying about the water. This court finds the defendant, Miss Lana Skye. Little girl, what did you just say? Huh? M me? Did you say that I, Angel Star, was on the prosecution side? Well, yeah, you are. You're saying my sister hid evidence by erasing the bloody fit footprints. Well, I thought you had your fill, but here you are demanding a second helping. Another lunchbox. A lunchbox called evidence. W wait, witness, don't tell me you have something oh else. Oh my gosh, this girl. You've reached your verdict, Your Honor. Any further comments will be held in contempt of court. Your threats don't scare the cough-up queen. Look at this! A photograph? I have this just in case anyone had the gale to suggest. Gall. Gall, bluff. That the white shoe didn't belong to the victim. Hmm. I see no room for error in this evidence. Mr. Wright, wait! Look at the asphalt in this photo! Hey! It's clearly wet! Erasing the last trace of doubt from the court's mind. Immediately after the murder, the crime scene was washed with water. I'm sorry, Mr. Wright. I guess I... I couldn't help after all. It's not your fault. I knew I couldn't win this case from the beginning. And it seems this is what your sister wanted anyway. I'm sorry, Mia. Right, wet or not. Don't be so quick to throw in the towel. Get yourself up off the asphalt. Take another good look. Don't give up. Not until the bitter end. This is the last piece of evidence. Very well. This time I'd like to declare a verdict for good. Your Honor, wait. What is it with you people? Can't I hand down my verdicts in peace anymore? Nope. Whatever it is, can it wait? No, it can't. Then it will be too late. <laughs> Look at this photograph, the last one submitted. This trial isn't over until we give each piece of evidence proper consideration. So, right. Are you saying there's a problem with this latest piece of evidence? Yeah, I'll think later. Yeah, there's a problem. Right or wrong, I've got to go ahead with this. I suppose since we've come this far, we should give every claim a fair shake. Very well, Mr. Wright. Show the court the problem with this photograph. Oh boy. I gotta really examine this. There's the car. There's the dude in the trunk. His shoes on the... out of the water. Yep. Is that it? We could try it. Well, it's probably here, don't you think? Nope. As your elder, Mr. Wright, let me give you a piece of advice. When you point at something, at least remember to keep your eyes open. I believe he's trying to say that no one's falling for your bluffs, Mr. Wright. Open your eyes, Wright! Think scientifically! Oh, not even a penalty. <laughs> That's very generous of them. It's not on the car. Like, there's no water in the car, as far as I well, can Well, no, because she tipped it over and it just spilled on the ground. But it's not even below the car. Well, that's um, because there's, like, a bump here. It's, like, a, not quite a speed mm -hmm. bump, but, like, it's enough to separate the water. Only some of it's wet, not all. The you part that's that? important is wet, though. Yeah. Because the oil drum wouldn't make, like, a clean sweep wait, absolutely everywhere. Why is this part darker than this? 
uh, shading. Oh, okay. It's not a blood stain. Why is everything left being black and white? <laughs> Knife is still left in. Yep. And, um... Didn't she pull it out? No. She didn't pull it out? No. Does that mean some dude have to be like, UGH! Like, pulling it out in order to get the blood? In order to get the evidence, yeah. Ugh. Remind me to never become a policeman. Um... <laughs> well, you can't become a policeman. True, but just anything with that. Um... We're waiting, Mr. Wright. <laughs> I'm sorry. Let me think. <laughs> Mr. Reed? <laughs> This is one of the toughest cases. Okay. Um... Is there blood on his sock? Um, no. No, there wouldn't be blood on the sock. Um... Do you not see it? Not right now, no. <laughs> Do you give up then? Give up, blah, blah, blah. Give up. That's the back part of the car. The problem in this photograph is here. What's this? There's something poking out of the car's muffler. Wait just a moment, Mr. Edgeworth. Your Honor, you just said muffler. However, I see no trace of a muffler or scarf any of any kind in this photograph. A muffler is also a part on a car or a motorcycle, That's Your Honor. That's what I thought they were originally talking about. Just think of it as part of the exhaust system. A pipe. I see, and I see! I didn't see anything poking out of it. What's that suspicious looking cloth sticking out of the car's muffler? Hmm, so what if there is something sticking out of the muffler? What does that have to do with this case? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. Sorry, Miss Star, but it's not going to be that easy. In fact, you've already told us why this is important to the case. You said as much in your testimony. What? Let's hear what Mr. Wright has on his mind. Tell us why you think this piece of cloth in the muffler is related to this case. The car... My attorney's back! Well, Your Honor, how do you feel about that? I'm an attorney! <laughs> Actually, I don't feel well at all. I have this pounding headache. No, no, I meant, what do you think about the... I'm afraid the reason is for that headache is you, Mr. Wright. That cloth was found in the car's muffler, right? Muffler. Muffler. Where have I heard that word recently? Muffler. Is the scarf stuck in there? Possibly. Oh. She heard the word muffler okay. on the phone. Miss Star, recall your testimony for the court. Ah, yes. When I arrested her, she mentioned the muffler. That's what had me confused in my earlier testimony. Muffler. Ugh! Yug! Could it be that the muffler you heard mentioned was actually this exhaust pipe? If so, that means this piece of cloth is vital evidence. Ugh! Woo! I don't know what to say. <laughs> Warg! Warg! Well, it seems we will have to suspend the proceedings. Ugh, suspend? I find myself wondering about that piece of cloth. If we leave any question unanswered here, we do a disservice to the law. Have the car at the crime scene inspected at once, and bring me that cloth. The verdict will wait until after we've seen all of the evidence. Agreed? I suppose so. Whew. That was close. But we made it. At least for now. The court will adjourn for a 30 minute recess. It's lunchtime after all. He's still hungry! <laughs> he said five lunch boxes. To be continued at last. Finally. So this is where I thought the trial just ended. No! There's more trial after this. <laughs> My gosh. Oh yeah. But j just so everybody's aware. Next episode is where the case is going to be like, wait, what? And like, it's going to get amazing. Because okay. right thus far, it's been kind of boring. Wouldn't you agree? Yes. <laughs> She's nodding yes. her head. Anyhow, 
Please tune in next time. It'll be awesome. Until cool. we meet again, have a great day and God bless.